Oh, the tangled webs our politicians weave. How many times have we heard blatant lies coming from those in power? And worse yet, how many times have they gotten away with it? It certainly feels as if lies are to be expected nowadays, and the abundance of liars lately is proof of that. The lies we hear are often spun to conceal failures, to conceal cronyism or corruption. Liars in the political class is not a new thing. We can all pick names throughout the years who have lied and or shown themselves to be corrupt. We even have one of those names from the past trying his best to be rehabilitated, even though he himself has such little remorse for his misdeeds that he doesn't believe he needs any rehabilitation in the public's eye. Don't worry, Bertie. We all see you for what you truly are. We all remember. Thanks in no small part to publications like The Ditch and The Village magazine, the liars have been exposed, their misdeeds laid bare for all to see. And yet, they are all sitting TDs earning a pretty penny, paid for by the taxpayer. We have people like Robert Troy with his property empire and forgetfulness. He has forgotten to declare his interests, forgotten to register tenancies, forgotten even more properties, forgotten to declare directorships, not to mention his curiously profitable dealings with sales to the local council, of which he had previously been a councillor. And while he resigned as a junior minister, he is still earning his TD salary plus expenses. We also have Damien English, who forgot to declare his properties and lied on a planning application in order to circumvent the rules. A deliberate act, no matter what his defence is. The forms and rules are not that complicated. Others who have skirted planning laws have been ordered to demolish their house, yet not a peep about his home. He also forgot that he had a distressed mortgage, or two, or three, or four, when speaking in the doll and shannon about the vulture funds who are taking over his mortgages, and when working on mortgage arrears reforms, lying by omission, but still lying, benefiting from those lies also, as unlike many others, he is still somehow in possession of both his houses. Another who resigned a junior ministry position, but is still a sitting TD. Then we have Niall Collins, or Niall O'Connor, or wait, was it, was it Neil Collins? Imagine having so much confusion over your own name. Another who thinks it's okay to lie on a planning application in order to circumvent the rules. Lying about where he lives, lying about his name, and lying again when asking for an extension for said ill-gotten planning permission. Still a sitting TD. We have Pascal Donoghue, who can't seem to remember election expenses. Now on this issue, if it was only about the posters, you might have some sympathy and say, sure, everyone makes mistakes. But this was never just about posters, was it? If you're a cynic like myself, you might be thinking the story about the posters broken by more mainstream publications was merely a distraction designed to be a storm in a teacup to take the public gaze off of Damien English and his curious mortgage situation. And it did so quite well, until the ditch and others started investigating and showing that the real issue here was the apparent cronyism involved, and that it was not simply a storm in a teacup. Michael Stone, the man who did the favour with the posters, was appointed to the Land Development Agency, nominated by Donoghue's party colleague Owen Murphy, and then appointed as chairperson of the North Inner City Task Force after a nomination by Pascal himself. He has had numerous off-the-record meetings with the Minister for Finance, with no minutes taken. Now, if that doesn't look like a case of, if you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours, or to put it another way, cronyism, I don't know what does. We've had on Tarnished and Michal Martin failing to declare holiday homes or an apartment in Dublin because it was in his wife's name. Nothing to see here, apparently. Spouses don't matter. And let's not forget our Taoiseach, Leo Varadkar, who leaked confidential documents to a friend and it was brought to light by the Village magazine. He admitted this and later lied about being cleared of any wrongdoing when in fact his SIPO appointees decided they couldn't look into it further, despite the fact that two other members of SIPO strongly disagreed with that outcome. Hardly a ringing endorsement of his actions or a clearing of his name like he would have you believe. He also tends to lie whenever he's put on the spot. Rents are no cheaper elsewhere. The billionaires Oxfam refer to in Ireland aren't really billionaires. And no, it can't be true when Bernardo's say one in ten families have used food banks in the last year. Oh, and don't forget how he didn't see or know of any government memo about the nursing home payment strategy. You know, until he did. 
And these are just some of the stories we know about. Not to mention other dodgy donations, others scrambling to update their interests, or others with their false insurance claims. All of these people, and more, have similarities. They all brazened their respective actions out while attempting to appear as though no wrongdoing ever took place. Just sweep it under the rug. A rug that is bursting at the seams. So why is it that they lie? Well, simply because they can get away with it. I genuinely thought that the nursing home payment scandal would be enough to finally tip the scales and force the government into submission, that it would be the straw that broke the camel's back to finally bring an end to this farce of a government. But no, I was wrong. They got away with it. I should have known not to get my hopes up. For a moment, I forgot to be a cynic. What did we get instead? We got what we always get. Lies, lies, and more lies, followed by hoping that it will all just be forgotten, and an unhealthy dose of brass necks all round. All of the people I've spoken about here have used the same excuses. Oh, it was just a mistake. I didn't mean to mislead or do anything wrong. Or indeed, arguing with the facts and outright saying they did nothing wrong. All while others back them up, praise them, or in the case of Damien English and Pascal Donahue, get a stirring round of applause by their party colleagues. One has to wonder as to the motivations of people in government. They are supposed to be there to try to better our country for all its citizens, to represent the public and to do right by the people. But time and time again we see that they don't care one iota for the people once their noses are firmly in the trough. The pay for our public representatives, i.e. TDs, is now more than it was at the height of the Celtic Tiger bluster. Greed is a dangerous thing and here we are allowing these people to not only earn a ridiculous amount at our expense, but also claim for a litany of expenses on top. Is it any wonder they chance their arm for more? Greed begets greed after all. So what can be done to keep this greed in check? Well, the government would have you believe that there are already checks and balances to stop corruption and strokes from happening. There are regulators, they will say. But pick any sector, any industry in this country and ask yourself, does the regulator actually work? I can't think of any off the top of my head where the answer would be yes. SIPO, the regulator of our political class, has been shown up time and time again as toothless and gutless. But I would argue that it's exactly by design. Paper for show regulators to appear like the government care about stopping favours and corruption, about stopping enrichment from being in a position of power, but with no follow through to back it up. It's all about keeping up appearances. And since I've mentioned it, it is very clear that many elected officials have enriched themselves through the power they hold. Absolute power corrupts absolutely, as the old saying goes, and I would ask what is absolute power but the absence of accountability. And in Irish politics, accountability is merely a word in the dictionary that doesn't apply to them. Any other walk of life and those chancers, those liars and the many failures in government would be held accountable and they would be out of a job. But here they just keep getting pay rises and keep finding new loopholes and ways around the laws they legislate and are supposed to uphold. When a number of TDs and others found themselves in a hotel having a knees up after a round of golf when the rest of the country was in strict lockdown, the loopholes were found to explain it all away. Sure, there were some casualties, but only because one of their number represented us on the world stage, so we had to be seen to have some accountability. The other casualties were again simply paper resignations, where they were to keep their head down, and when people forget, be brought back into the fold because that's how Irish politics rolls. At this point, I do have to ask, where are the opposition? Why are they not beating the accountability drum and putting the government to the proverbial sword over every single scandal? Each scandal paints a clearer picture for all to see of a government in it for themselves, and yet the opposition have been weak. My advice for the opposition parties? Get your houses in order and take the government to task. There is no mechanism for the public to recall failing or corrupt politicians, so we rely on the opposition to make that case for us. And yet they are failing. How this government has survived so many scandals is beyond me, but it is becoming increasingly clear that we the people must be the ones to bring the accountability. 
we must not give these chancers a second chance and our only opportunity will be at the polls. Until then, we must suffer through more lies and gaslighting from those supposed to represent us. Thanks for joining me today. If you enjoyed what I had to say, then please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel for more from me. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to be notified of new videos as soon as they become available. You can also follow me on Twitter for my real-time reactions to the news of the day. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, Slonga Fall.